third largest of California's eight Channel Islands is comprised of 47,844 acres and covers approximately 75 square miles. It is located 19.7 miles from the nearest mainland, Palos Verdes Peninsula. It is 21 miles long with 54 miles of coastline. Approximately six miles from the westernmost end are two opposing coves that nearly cut Catalina in two. This thin neck of land remaining is called the Isthmus, I-S-T-H-M-U-S, and it's only a quarter of a mile wide. Early explorers believed they had discovered two islands when they saw Santa Catalina Island from the sea. Catalina Island is known for its marvelous climate and is often compared to a Mediterranean Riviera. In the summer, it is consistently 10 degrees cooler than the mainland due to cool ocean breezes. During the winter, temperatures average 10 degrees higher as a result of the warm Japanese current that flows into San Pedro Channel that's between Catalina and the mainland. Now Catalina is a paradise for anglers, tourists, environmentalists, scuba divers, boaters, and beach lovers with over a million visitors each summer. It is almost like a modern day Camelot. In addition to its perfect climber, climate and natural beauty, Catalina has a fascinating history. We will begin this magical Catalina history with learning about the tribal homeland. During the past two centuries, Catalina has been relatively unpopulated this was not the case centuries ago when large numbers of native islanders called Catalina Island their home. Experts believe that as many as four different tribes lived on Catalina during the per past 30,000 years. And almost most of this information of the early tribes has been lost some have been discovered recently, but much of the evidence we have has been gathered from the ancient dumps where they tossed everything they no longer needed. These dumps mark their settlements and have given archaeologists information about their diet and their habits. There is much that is unknown about Catalina native islanders. Our written knowledge of them did not begin until the Spanish arrived in 1542 and began chronicling their observations. Before that, we have only theories from the evidence that was found in these deep digs Experts agree that a pure form of the Stone Age existed in Catalina Island longer than anywhere else in North America. This is probably because soapstone, an easy to carve stone, was available in large quantities on the island. This soapstone was used to make bowls and mortars used in a lot of the building. It was also good for bartering with other tribes.
Catalina Native Islanders used lava to make weapons and bones to make musical instruments. Some islanders lived in large circular huts and they ate fish, abalone, acorns, sweet potato roots that were brought over from the mainland traveled there by boat. They made fine cat canoes The first recorded observations when the Spanish arrived were written in the journals of our historical records. In 1542, only 50 years after Columbus had discovered America, General Cabrillo briefly anchored his ship in what's now known as White Landing. The islanders gave his, guided his ship into a safe anchorage and prepared a feast for the entire crew. Almost immediately, the Spanish began attempts to convert them to Christianity. In return for the invitation to the Spaniard masses, they honored Biscanio and his crew who was a, uh, a minister who came along to convert all of the natives to Christianity. Soon after, in 1806, a Russian fur company arrived and slaughtered all of the otters in Catal Catalina Island. Along with that, they killed enormous numbers of otters and sea life, but also looted, raped, and slaughtered the Catalina native, native Islanders. Many who survived this brutal onslaught contracted a variety of diseases introduced to them from these Russian hunters. Catalina Islanders never recovered. Between 1820 and 1832, Hopeless and broken, those who still survived left the islands 